Hi, I'm John Jackson, director of the Baldwin County Department of Archives and History, and I'm standing in one of the beautiful rooms here at the Swift Coles home in Bon Secure. In a joint effort with the Historic Development Commission, the Baldwin County Department of Archives and History hosts tours in the home every Tuesday and Friday from 10 until 4 o'clock. We are standing in the middle of the Swift Coles home here, which sits on five acres of beautiful property just off the Bon Secure River. The home is located just off Highway 49 in the Bon Secure community. The house features 6,000 square feet on the interior with period furniture uh, in each room. Another 3,500 square feet of open porch space complements the outside of the home. The home sits on five acres of beautiful property just off the river here in Bon Secure and we would invite people to come visit with us every Tuesday and Friday. And in the coming years, we will actually host weddings, wedding receptions, club events of all types, and your special event if you would like to host one here. In addition, in the past, we have also hosted a, an event in conjunction with Fort Morgan featuring the Union Raid on the Bon Secure Salt Works. Uh, the home itself is in pristine condition. It is a, a Tidewater mansion. It was donated to the Historic Development Commission a couple of years ago by Mr. Nick Coles. The home is used as it was in that condition, donated to the county as a house museum and features 16 rooms with period furniture. If you're a visitor to Baldwin County, no visit would be complete without a tour of the historic Swift Coles home in Bon Secure. And if you're a native of Baldwin County, to better understand your heritage, to take a look back into the past of what Baldwin County looked like 100 years ago, come to the Swift Coles home in Bon Secure and take a tour of your past. A very, very rich part of Baldwin County heritage is in the southern part of the county on the Bon Secure River. Um, actually begun by the earliest French settlers in the area and the Lemoyne brothers even used this as an R&R &R retreat for their uh, colonists who were here. Bon Secours French heritage focused on the fishing industry and today Bon Secours is still a vibrant fishing community. The waterways in Bowen County were so incredibly important and because of the access to this community by the deep water of the beautiful Bon Secours River, uh, the fishing community was thriving for many, many years. The first homes in this area were most likely little cabins and typical rural and country architecture in Bowen County in the early 1800s was a dog trot house which may have been a four-room home um, with an opening through the center of the house that was called the dog trot. The Swift Coles Historic Mansion in Bon Secours may well have begun that way. The historic marker reading 1882 refers to the original four rooms of the home. It was built of the horizontal heart pine planks that are visible in the hallway and is um, most likely open through the center and was a dog trot, a home of a bon secours fisherman, perhaps a Creole or French fisherman in this community. We have records that in 1898, the home was purchased by Charles Swift, uh, who was already married to Susan Platt Roberts of Mobile, and they already had quite a few children, and they moved here permanently about the turn of the century. And we assume that at that time, the dog trot was enclosed and the home was updated, and rooms were built to the west to enlarge the home. The porches were added downstairs at that time, and you can notice that the new part of the house has the vertical beaded board home. Now, when we say new part, we probably mean about the turn of the century. And we know that the heart pine was milled right here on the property because the Swifts of the Swift Lumber Company had one of their sawmills located right here where the Schoolhouse Creek enters the Bon Secours River. The upstairs of the house was actually added in 1908. 
Um, there are records uh, in a letter or journal entry that tell us that an engineer was asked to come here and look at the foundation of the house to be sure that the upstairs could be built. And indeed it was. And the upstairs footprint of the house is the same as the downstairs, uh, totaling about 6,000 square feet. People tell us that the Swifts say that they added a room with every child that was born and they did raise their 11 living children in this home. The Swift family lived here until 1976, and at that time, the last uh, surviving uh, child, uh, who was uh, Susan Nell Marshall, uh, died, and at that time, the home was purchased by Nick Coles. Nick was a local entrepreneur who um, ran the Friendship House restaurant in Gulf Shores and was an antique dealer. And he lived in the home with a passion and a love for restoring the home and furnishing it with antiques that were um, fitting for the home. And as a gesture for public love of history, Nick bequeathed the home to Ballin County Historic Development Commission. And the furnishings in the home that are visible today are representative of those that would have been fitting in the house at that time. As one walks through the house today, we can imagine it was 1910 as seen in the earliest photograph that we have of the house after it was two-story. The picket fence is the same. The live oak trees with their deep bending branches almost touching the ground. The Spanish moss hanging from the branches. The wildlife that are around. The rivers flowing around the house can give you a feeling of uh, indeed returning to 1910. And when you walk through the house, you can imagine the Christmases that were held here, the Thanksgiving dinners, the times that people would gather around the table and tell family stories. So the Swift Cole House today tells family stories. The descendants of the Swift and the Swift family today visit often and share with us the memories of, of their family heritage. Friends and family of Nick Coles come here and tell us how wonderful their memories that they share of being in this house are. And today, we're making memories as we remember those precious memories. One of the Swift children was Amelia. Now, Amelia married a local man, Charlie Wakeford. And they were actually living in the house during World War II. And the part of the house that is today displayed as a dining room with this 14-foot magnificent cypress table was the kitchen for the Swift family. And Amelia and her husband, Charlie, were famous for bringing in the local soldiers stationed near here for a day of home-cooked meals and entertainment. Their oyster stew and gumbo became so famous that following World War II, they opened a restaurant, Mimi's, one of the most famous restaurants in Baldwin County, which is a story in itself. I remember Mimi's restaurant as being like somebody's dining room. It was very quaint and, and quiet, and you had to have a reservation, and uh, you just sat there and, and ate like you were getting down to business. And the, the food was very, very good, very good. Um, the restaurant, the recipes are original. Uh, and when people try to duplicate those recipes, they do not taste anywhere near the same. Um, 
as I remember, the, um, the restaurant never was very crowded at one time because she liked to make sure that she took care of each customer, gave them special attention. So she made sure she allowed enough time so that she wouldn't be busy with a whole bunch of customers. And uh, the, the things that I uh, liked about the cookbook was they have stories in them about uh, the area. And uh, the one I remember was uh, the story about the crying baby. And nobody could figure out <laughs> where the crying baby was coming from. And uh, that always intrigued me. And mystery always intrigues everybody. And I, I think that's another one of the attractions of the book. They could tell stories about the area and then uh, have the good food also, because this, this area is known for its great food. And rich, the food here is rich. And uh, I, I never knew too much about Charlie, her husband. He was, he was very quiet and always stayed in the background. And uh, like I say, uh, she was also a postmaster. And uh, she had stopped when we moved here, retired and moved permanently to the area. She had already stopped being postmaster because they had built the new post office in uh, Bonsacore. And so there was no need for her to do that because it was away from her restaurant. Back in, in the kitchen, when they were cooking, Mimi and her hostess didn't measure uh, the ingredients most of the time. They just put what they thought would uh, taste the best, and they would sample taste it. And if you need a little uh, this spice or that spice, then they would just add a little bit of this, a little bit of that, until it tasted how they thought it should taste. And then they would serve it. And it always had to be served. They put a lot of... Um, um, work into making sure that it was served so that it looked appetizing. The display meant a lot to them too. And it was, it was appetizing. It made you want to eat more. <laughs> I remember when Governor Wallace and his wife uh, ate there and they served a lot of uh, important people and they shipped their gumbo as far as Canada. I remember them having a lot of orders to ship out. Now, how they accomplished that without it spoiling, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure they must have used dry ice, something like that. But they always had big orders, whether they were uh, being sent for restaurants there or private individuals, that I don't know. But they, I know they did ship a lot of their food to different places. She was a very quiet person, and she seemed to like, she seemed to, to uh, be peaceful with herself and, and the area and, and like life. She seemed to be very pleased with herself. And well, she should be. She made, uh, uh, she, she accomplished quite a lot in her lifetime. Was very busy all the time and, and uh, enjoyed what she did. She seemed everything that she took on, she enjoyed it. Charles Swift died. Uh, Miss Susie Swift was left as a widow with 11 children to raise in this big, beautiful home. And I was, uh, she was my, I called her mamma. She was like my grandmother. And when she had the children from Mobile to come over for the summer, I would always be invited to share in their good fortune of having Mrs. Swift, as people called her, or the madam, was a nickname for her by the people in Bon Secure. She was a beautiful lady, had a, gray hair, wore black dresses, and drove a black Packard touring car. She was the first woman I ever saw driving a car. But she was very, very generous. As you can tell from the Swift Consolidated School, gave the property, St. Peter's Episcopal Church, gave them the property for that. But at Christmas time, she brought all the children at St. Peter's a gift and uh, wrapped them or anyone in the cemetery, I mean in the community, and she did that for us. And I always loved to come down here. She had a big box in the corner of the parlor, and it had the wrapped gifts in it. Well, of course, we got gifts at Christmas time, but they were never wrapped. So she knew who the gift was for who, 
and she came around and delivered them. That was a joyous Christmas for the children in Bon Secure. And I tell them they didn't come from Sears Roebuck catalog either. <laughs> that is my memories of her. She homeschooled those children. And my memories of this room where I sit today was a huge bed sitting kind of catty-cornered to the nursery, which is next door to this room. And uh, I always remembered coming and being greeted by her sitting in a chair in this uh, master bedroom. But anyway, the, this home had a driveway all the way to the river. You could see the river. They had cottages there and a beautiful sandy bottom. And people came here to, for the vacation because we didn't have paved road to Gulf Shores. And they came and stayed in the cottages and went fishing. We had fishing guides to take them out to Mobile Bay. And it was uh, on 4th of July, we had boiled shrimp, boiled crabs, and a big festival down on the uh, beach. I, the, there were no trees in between the house. And she had um, uh, benches built around the trees, and we called it the grove. So the children always had a place to go out. And there was always something to eat especially when she made gumbo in that big pot and stirred it with the swift wooden spoon. So in it, those memories of, of mine in this home, it was always called a big house. And someone said, well, the children called it uh, the plantation. I said, well, children living in Mobile must have thought it was a plantation because there were cows and chickens and uh, 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 pro to provide food for them when they came because it was such a large family. I personally knew all of the 11 children except General Ira Platt Swift. I never met him. And her youngest child was Edward, and he was handicapped. But he had a very jolly spirit. There was two little cousins used to come, Roger and Buddy, Miss Susan L's uh, son was Buddy Marshall, and they would come over from Mobile, and I had a lovely little sister, and my old Edward Swift would say, I'll give you 50 cents if you'll kiss her. So we, <laughs> we did have fun at times with, uh, you would never think of him as being such a wonderful person, and he had a seafood business. Now Mimi, who was known all over the United States for her restaurant, was built right down at what we call Swift's Landing. And uh, she was a postmistress. And she and her husband were living in this house when Maman died. I think Mimi was living here. Edward lived here. Uh, Billy Swift came back from the Merchant Marines after the war. And he and our own Swift, she was a, a principal of Swift's Consolidated School for 30 years. And they lived in this house, and little Ione, as we called her, and she's Ione Jerkowitz, lived here. And uh, uh, Miss Emily was a teacher here. Two of the girls came back as teachers and taught in Bon Secure. Two of the uh, children were nurses. And when Polly Swift uh, Williams retired, she came back, built a home on Monsecure River. So there were five of them were anxious to and loved to be back at their roots. I lived in the house when I was a child. My grandparents were Susie, Susan Cornelia Platt Robert Swift, and Charles Augustus Swift. They moved here around 1900. He, my grandfather, bought hundreds of acres of timberland on both sides of the river and he set up a sawmill just east of the house here on a little creek on the river. And uh, he and his wife, Susie, moved here with their eight children. They had three more children. The last was born in 1906. That would be Edward, Edward Gavin Swift. After my father and mother married in 1935, they moved here. At the time, Amelia, my father's sister, Amelia Wakeford, and her husband were living here. And um, my parents lived <clears throat> upstairs. 
and I was born here, <clears throat> excuse me, in 1939, and they lived upstairs in the cold and um, had a kitchen, a little apartment, and when I was a child, there was a long, long, long table in one of the hallways, and I was told that that was used mostly for the seamstress that would come twice a year to cut out patterns and make clothes for the children. Um, and to me, it just seemed like it was huge. It didn't have very much sitting on it when I was living here. It was just there. And I think it had the family Bible on it. But it just was so big, it looked like a bowling alley to me. It was very long. But they had 11 children, so they needed to have a lot of clothes made. And uh, that's the way, it, I guess it was like a roving seamstress or something that would come around and uh, make clothes for the children. I lived here for probably maybe 10 years from the time I was born till I was about 10, I guess. And um, my Aunt Emmy, who was my father's sister, never married, came over from Mobile and she took care of me while my mother taught school. And uh, I escaped one day and walked up to the school, which was like a quarter of a mile from here, and sat on the running board of her car. And there was a lot of commotion when they found me missing. And finally, somebody noticed me and brought me in. But uh, I just decided to take a break, I guess. But anyway, it was, it was fun living here, running up and down the stairs. And um, I got lost and I got left in the corn crib one time. I followed the hired man into the corn crib, and he didn't know it, and he got, did what he had to do or got some cord or whatever and went out and locked the door, and I was in there screaming and hollering, and somebody finally came and got me. And uh, there was lots of swimming in, in the river, and I never saw any alligators, but my daddy used to tell me there were 15-foot alligators in the river, but I never heard anybody got eaten. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I had friends that we would go and swing on the vines and walk around on the tree limbs, and we were just big tomboys. But the house was, it was so big, and you could just get lost in it. And uh, I remember the big trough out on the back, and it was, Big. There was a tiny little kitchen with no sink in it, just a refrigerator and a stove. And the trough was where we washed dishes. Two big pans of water, soapy water, rinse water. And in the wintertime, it was cold out there on that north porch. But that's just the way it was. There were um, two bathrooms on the uh, northwest, upstairs and downstairs, northwest corners. And it was a long trek from the other end of the house. And I used to stay here a lot in the summer with my Aunt Susan L. and Uncle Randy Marshall. And my mother went to summer school three summers, and I would practically live down here with, with them and uh, run around and just have a good time. They, um, they were very tolerant and very nice and hardworking. But um, it was a great place to live. West Cole House is a lovely old house. It was started in 1882, we think, by Mr. Gavin. It was bought by Mr. and Mrs. Charles Swift in uh, about 1895. And well, uh, their family lived here until 1976, when the last family member who wanted to live in the house died. And after that, Mr. Nick Coles bought the house. Uh, Mr. Coles had loved the house since he first saw it in the early 1950s. And he uh, kept riding down and looking at the house and enjoying its beauty and was prepared to build a house uh, like this one. He'd bought uh, various architectural antiques so that he could build a house. And when Mrs. Marshall died and the family announced they were going to sell the house, he made an offer on it and got 
the house that he had loved for so long. The house was known to the family and to all the people in Bonsacour as the big house. And uh, I think that's quite an appropriate name. It has 16 rooms. 12 of them are open to the public at this time. There are many very interesting pieces of furniture in the house. The, uh, one of the things that people love is the dining room table. Uh, it's originally a plantation table from the early 1800s from a Louisiana plantation. This came out of a dirt floor kitchen. But the table is 14 feet long and is one piece of cypress. And, and when you see it, it's really quite impressive. Uh, there are some other interesting pieces of furniture in the dining room, some lovely old china and crystal in the dining room. In addition to that, there's a handsome pair of uh, candelabra that are uh, in proportion to the size of the table in the room. Another room that we enjoy is the family parlor, which was originally the dining room in the Swift home. Uh, they uh, moved the kitchen to the back porch, or uh, to a room off the back porch. The uh, present dining room was the kitchen originally. Uh, the Swifts enjoyed the dining room and in, when it was in this room, and then they enjoyed it as a family sitting room. I think it was probably an easy room to keep warm. This house is a wonderful, typical old house that uh, some days it's hard to get quite warm enough, but we now have central heat and air so that uh, we're learning to adjust it, and we promise everybody when they come they will not be too warm or too cool in spite of it being an old house. The family parlor is another room that is filled with beautiful furniture and crystal. The draperies are from a Louisiana plantation and they date to the 1880s. The mantel is the only cypress mantel in the house and is a lovely design. There's a large chest called a Jackson Press that is beautiful crotch mahogany. There's also a Chippendale chest on stand that is filled with uh, his imported Chinese and Japanese china. There are other interesting pieces of furniture in this room, such as a birdcage table. This is a tilt-top table that has a birdcage apparatus that makes it tilt, and people find that interesting. The chandelier and the mirror in this room are both from Paris. Uh, in this room, people are always interested in the picture that we have of Susie Nell Swift Marshall, who was the last person to live in the house. And the picture is from the days uh, when she was a late teenager. So, and it's a very gracious, lovely picture of a young woman from that period. There, Mr. Cole's study is downstairs. That room was originally the nursery in the house. And it has several interesting artifacts. There are also two bedrooms downstairs. One is known as the bride's room or the honeymoon room. And at least eight or nine brides dressed in this room. And we think probably some of them spent their first night, uh, their wedding night in this room. So uh, that always creates a lot of interest. And the other bedroom is filled with lovely antiques. The walls that are exposed in the oldest part of the house, which is the fancy parlor and two bedrooms and study, uh, those boards are laid horizontally. All the addition to the house, the boards are laid vertically, which is an interesting thing to people to note as they go through the house. In one of the bedrooms downstairs is the uh, original chandelier from the Swift house. Mr. Coles found it in the barn and 
immediately decided to place this in the house. The hallway downstairs, the people from Bonsacour particularly have happy memories of having a Sunday school and Bible school in that part of the house. Miss Swift used it as a library and it was filled with bookshelves and books. Upstairs in the house, there are three bedrooms that are open plus the hall. One of the bedrooms is, uh, is filled with Mr. Cole's antique toys. Some of the toys are antiques, but I can remember having similar things to play with, so I can assure you that they are old, and some of the things are even older than I am. Uh, but everyone loves going into this room to see the pretty things. The master bedroom upstairs has a beautiful acorn bed and a trundle bed that matches it. Uh, the trundle bed being that fancy is a little unusual. So many of the trundle beds are more, uh, well, have less ornamentation on them. But the, the artwork upstairs is interesting. The bathroom to the master bath is, I hate to admit it, was one of my favorite rooms because it has a copper tub in it. That the copper tub is just, well, who wouldn't want to have a luxurious bath in this deep tub that uh, is unpolished copper so that it really has the old look about it. The other fixtures in the bathroom are modern, but that copper tub is really just something that everybody likes. In one of the upstairs bedrooms is a boy's coat, probably when, from when he was six to eight. Uh, this belonged to Ira Swift. Ira ended up as going to West Point and becoming a brigadier general during World War II. And we feel that this, fam this family piece, the coat, is a real treasure in our house. Uh, and it's in beautiful condition. It is on display most of the time. The upstairs was added to the house in 1908. We know this because it was recorded in one of the Swift girls' diaries that Papa had called a contractor to come and see if the foundation would support a second story. And one of the family members still has this diary, so that adds great interest. There was a, an upstairs bath off of the back porch and a downstairs bath off of the back porch, which is how baths were often added onto old houses or where they were placed in old houses. But before there were baths there, there was an uh, what I believe we would call an outhouse, and uh, it contained a five-holer. That was a lot of togetherness. <laughs> it is still, the remains are still there, though it's not in usable condition. The one thing that I want to tell you about this house I'm so proud of, that Dick Coles, when I suppose even when uh, Susan L. lived here, he would come and sit in front of the house, and he said he never married, but he had an affair with a house. So when the for sale sign came up, Nick Coles bought it. And he is the one that has preserved it, made it this beautiful home that it's a treasure for anyone to come and go through it. He was very fastidious, he was very educated, but he did like to work outside in his garden and his flowers and things. But we all have appreciated the Bon Secure Nick, and he did so much for this area, too. Nick told about the story of Mary, who was the last black woman that worked in this house. And he said he could hear noises, and he'd get up and he couldn't see anything. And he'd go and he said, I saw Mary coming down that stairs. It was a big curved stairs. And he said he saw Mary coming down the stairs. So he was uh, so fastidious about everything and so generous with everything that uh, we, we just 
to pursue the story from Nick telling about the ghost. But then when it, the girls tell the story about this house, they tell about a desk that was moved from here that they say it moved, papers were moved on it. So we have to believe that some of the Swifts have left their ghost here because they love this house so much. And Nick loved his affair with the house so much. So anyway, we have to think that both those families have given to us so much in this community. And uh, it, was a, it was a sad day when Mamma Swift died because everybody in Monsecure loved her. And uh, then Nick came along and everybody knew Nick. And uh, he said in, in the hurricane that it, water came up here. And I don't know, maybe you know the story that he said he grabbed onto a cooler box and floated all the way up to the tin top. So anyway, I can believe him about the water because the river would rise. And uh, it was also sad because Mamaw Swift was the one that kept the uh, Fourth of July picnics and all the uh, food that we uh, prepared to go down on the river and have a Fourth of July picnic. And, and uh, Nick tried to have the events here when he wanted to have people come look at the house and tour the house and those sort of things, but he uh, just wasn't that most of it.